In the quiet town of Oatlands in central Tasmania, members of the armed forces have gathered to commemorate the life of a fellow soldier. But this is no ordinary service. Before there was just a simple metal cross with G Hardwick painted very rustically, so it's lovely to see that he's finally being recognised as a soldier. In 1963, Cornelius George Hardwick was buried here at the age of 80. His unadorned grave gave no indication he'd risked his life for his country during the First World War. The government made the promise to these men when they encouraged them to go away back in 16, 17, 18, that we will look after you when you come home. If you make that kind of promise and these men expected to be looked after, and they weren't really looked after. If, like George Hardwick, their death wasn't attributable to their war service, their family received no financial support for a memorial. He was just one of those who was basically forgotten about. Andrea and Ron Gerrard are members of the Headstone Project, an organisation which seeks to give deceased veterans who ended up in makeshift grave sites their overdue honours. A ceremony like this is thanks to their tireless research, fundraising and labour. Restoring George Hardwick's headstone and hundreds before him began here at Cornelian Bay in Hobart. There's nine of us. Uh, I think the youngest one's in the mid-50s. Most of them are 70 and above. The not-for-profit organisation needs to source concrete, tools, labourers and plaques, amongst many other things. Every headstone restoration requires these volunteers to travel hundreds of kilometres. The gravesite needs to be prepared at least a week before the ceremony to ensure both the headstone and the plaque are secure. Over many years of doing this work, the Headstone Project have it all down to a fine art. And while the work is physically taxing, the sad circumstances of these lost soldiers keep the group motivated, determined to leave no one behind. Since 2010, the Headstone Project has restored more than 500 graves in Tasmania alone. At a cost of $750 each, that's a total cost of around $375,000. Now, while this organisation and others like them across the country used to receive government funding, that's no longer the case, and they estimate there are more than 10,000 left to do. At the moment, we're using whatever reserves we've got, so I've Try very to be very careful and keep some money aside. They're desperate to secure long-term funding before they and the rest of their team become too old to carry on. We would like to keep the project going, but the age of our volunteers is prohibitive of that. And if they can't find the money or the volunteers, what happens next? I don't know. I, hate to, I wouldn't we, like to think of that one. <laughs> no, we don't like that thought. But basically, I guess the project will just fold up. Without them, thousands of soldiers' graves will remain unmarked, their history of service buried with them. 100 years ago, George Hardwick put his life on the line for his country. Finally, the time has come to lay him to rest. Halfway across the world, he witnessed things that we can only imagine. Although the conflict didn't take his life, the lasting effects of World War I shaped the rest of it. He died in a small town with no close family and no recognition of the sacrifice he made. I'd like to leave a legacy that says that we care, that we're a group of people who try to do something in a positive and, and a, in a real way. Why should they miss out? 
um, when others have got a, a headstone. They're all heroes for me. These guys deserve to be remembered.